Novel technologies um, are really changing the face of, of where we are clinically. Um, and part of those technologies have relied upon the, the ability to build sequence data on glass slides and to put cells into um, lipid droplets. So whole genome sequencing, single cell sequencing, and everything that falls from that is really going to change the face of multiple myeloma going forward. And one of the things you need to do is consider uh, the scientific method in the context of that description, because these huge amounts of data need to be kind of analyzed to be able to produce the correct result, see what that hypothesis is, and then you go back and recheck that to be sure that your hypothesis was correct. And so a lot of work that we're doing now is based on some very simple ideas. And this technology is allowing to turn that into clinical advances. So we stand at a time where we now have a link between the environment, the genome and the immunome via commensal bacteria in your gut, which is called the microbiome. And variations in the microbiome may affect your response to some of these new treatments, which use the immune system. So I think that's fascinating. We can go back and we can look at our models of multiple myeloma and really put together the drivers, the real drivers that push the disease forward, identify those drivers and target them specifically to stop the disease getting worse and sometimes to get rid of the disease completely. And the thing that's really exciting me in this meeting is understanding how to use um, these new immunotherapies directed against BCMA and GPRC5D. So these are dramatically good new drugs, but even with these drugs, patients are relapsing. And it turns out that these are all based on kind of Darwinian ideas of adaptation and survival of the fittest. So if you put a pressure on your tumor cells and you press on something really hard for a long time, the cells that will come back will lack that target. And so we saw some really beautiful presentations, one from Leo Rasher, showing a patient that lost BCMA from the cell surface, then relapsed, and then they had the GPRC5D antibody, went back into a remission, but when they relapsed, they had both of these mutations. And so what we're trying to do is learn how to sequence the drugs to prevent that happening, maybe giving the drugs together to uh, get people into deeper remissions. And so it's a really very exciting time for patients because we know that these drugs are going to do better than what we did in the past. And my hope is that these are going to come to the frontline setting really quickly and translate from this relapsing remitting course into a condition where the disease goes, goes to very low levels and then never comes back. And so I think we're starting to see that really happening and, and moving forward into clinical practice. So it's been a very exciting meeting.